Welcome back. Thanks for joining us once again. Today on Paramedic Project, final episode in our case preparation series, and we're talking about seizures, convulsions. So let's get right to it. First of all, cerebral causes. We've got to say epilepsy, and we need to say hemorrhagic stroke. They're the big cerebral causes. Then we can move on to airway causes, and with this one, I kind of group airway and respiratory causes together, simply because it's probably going to be a hypoxic seizure if this is the case. So airway causes of a hypoxic seizure we can have obviously foreign body and airway, we can have some other airway obstruction, maybe anaphylaxis. We can have just an obtunded airway from decreased GCS from another cause. Respiratory causes, any of our big ticket items, uh, if they present severely enough can cause hypoxia bad enough to cause an hypoxic seizure. So all of those normal uh, asthma, anaphylaxis, COPD, with or without exacerbation from chest infection. So they can all cause hypoxia bad enough to cause a seizure. On to cardiac causes, obviously AMI, dysrhythmia. So there we're talking about a source of hypotension. And obviously in that mix, we have to say cardiac arrest. Now, as a side note on this, anyone who presents with chest pain now fitting, really we have to say this is a cardiac arrest. And it might be because of an AMI, it might be an episode of VF in the early stage of an AMI, or it could be an extra cardiac cause, for example, PE or thoracic aortic aneurysm that's dissected. So that's, uh, that's a really, really important uh, point to make. Chest pain now fitting equals cardiac arrest. That's in my book anyway. Now we can move on to uh, D, possible other causes. Hypoglycemia springs to mind, and so does tox. Now, the typical tox that might cause hypoxia or a seizure for mine would be some type of opioid overdose. And uh, some people might think, yes, that's obvious, it causes respiratory depression, which can cause hypoxia. But another thing to think about with tox cases is that uh, sometimes it's more about a decrease in GCS because of uh, what the patient's actually taken. And this decrease in GCS, depending on how the patient's positioned, if they're sitting up in a car seat and they've got their head slumped forward, that can mean that they occlude their airway and prevents them from ventilating. Same if they're position lying down with their head in the corner of a room, once again with their head forward, it can occlude their airway. And that, with just a small amount of respiratory depression or just a little bit of the blunting of the patient's respiratory drive is enough to cause significant hypoxia, cause the patient to stop ventilating for a while, which will cause hypoxia. So uh, that could be the source of a seizure. And obviously we can say TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants, uh, they can actually present with seizures just as part of their symptomology. Of the, actual, uh, of the actual toxic dose of TCAs. Then obviously we go to E in our systematic approach, looking for trauma, head injuries, the first thing that springs to mind. Now, that's the final episode on case preparation. Some of you might be saying, well, uh, this case preparation is really good and it's all well and good to practice this on the way to the case, but what if you're not getting the cases when you're out on road? What if you're not getting dispatched to the big sick patients where we get to practice these skills and really hone them. Now, it's important to realize that you don't need to be getting dispatched to the cases to practice these skills. In the ambulance, we've got a vehicle radio. It's a big source of information. It's a big source of, lo of learning for me as well. We can hear other, other crews getting dispatched verbally to these cases. When we hear those big cases going down, you can actually run through some of these processes, test yourself, practice your case preparation kind of uh, script that you would go through and then with a bit of luck later on in your shift, you'll be able to catch up with one of those crews, ask them about the case, and then compare notes about how the patient actually presented and uh, what you did as case preparation. It's also a great source of uh, critical reflection on your practice and where you're at. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to identify some holes in your knowledge, some holes in your practice that you might need to go and either uh, read up on or practice a little bit more just so you're ready for these big cases. Final note on case preparation. Some of these lists have been really big with 10 or 20 different causes. Now they don't have to be that big every time if you've only got a couple of minutes uh, to get to a scene. If the scene you're going to is very close to your current location, you might just wanna go the big five uh, in each of these causes. So big five cause of seizure, uh, epilepsy, cardiac arrest, uh, some source of hypoxia, hypoglycemia. So they're, the, uh, they're obviously some of the different ways that you can adjust this approach. Sometimes they're long lists because you've got plenty of time on the way to scene. Sometimes they're shorter lists because you're close to scene and you've got some other things to think about like pharmacology or drug doses you might want to administer the patient when you get there as well. 
for the Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again on some social media. We'll see you next time.